Today we're talking all about glaciers, gigantic flowing rivers of ice. Who's ready to learn more? I just got back from another trip to Alaska, you know, busy, busy summer. And this time it was an Alaskan cruise and one of the stops we took along the cruise was again back in Glacier Bay National Park, this time from the water side of things. So we spent about half the day cruising up into the Glacier Bay National Park and then cruising back out and looking at all the beautiful glaciers along the way. So this video will be interspersed with some of that footage along with all of this information about glaciers which are an amazing feature of the Alaskan landscape and can be found a little lot of places in the world. Glaciers are formed up in higher elevations or higher latitude areas, so like at the top of a mountain. And at the top of mountains, because it's so much colder, you'll start to get snowfall. We have snowfall. And each year, whatever snow doesn't melt the year before gets covered with more and more snow. And then as the years pass on, more and more snow goes on top of that. And what happens to the layers underneath is that they start to get compacted into ice. The pressure from all of the snow above it actually changes the chemical structure of the ice crystal. So instead of being sharp and jagged, like we know pictures of snowflakes to be, they start to become rounder, softer, more circular, and more dense, and eventually that compacts over time into glacial ice. This really super dense ice that has formed from all this pressure of snow over the years and years and years of pressing down on it. And with so much pressure, that glacial ice starts to become almost plasticky on the bottom. And that gives glaciers defining features, which is when applied to the force of gravity, they start to move. Now you may not have seen any, shift that down real quick, may not have started to see any super dramatic movement with my glacier here because the tilt isn't very high, but if I tilt it more, it will slide down more. And that's how glaciers also work as well, depending on the elevation, depending on how much snow and ice feeds into it, depends on how quickly it moves down the mountain or how quickly it comes back up the mountain. Glaciers rely on what is called their snow budget. And the snow budget, I gotta like put my camera back here. Sorry friends, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> we'll watch this as I talk. So the snow budget of a glacier has to do with all of that ice and snow up at the top of it that is feeding into the glacier. So imagine there was a bunch more ice and snow right here. And as this glacier moved down the mountainside, there would be more ice to replenish it. This ice that's replenishing it is called an ice field. And if you have a lot of ice in your ice field as the glacier makes its way down the mountain, more ice comes out of the ice field into the glacier and the glacier advance or continues downwards. If there's not a lot of snow and ice up in the ice field, then the glacier is actually going to fall back or retreat. And this is what we call again, the glacier's snow budget. That has to do with our normal budget, you know? If you have a surplus of ice, your glacier is going to move forward or you're in the green. If you have a deficit of ice, your glacier is going to move backwards or retreat. There are different types of glaciers depending on where that kind of front edge or that foot of the glacier ends up. So if it stays high up into the mountains or kind of gets stuck in like a bowl of a mountain, that is called an alpine or a cirque glacier. If it makes its way down into like the valley or flat land, but doesn't hit any water at the end yet, that is called a Piedmont Glacier. So again, Piedmont Glacier is made its way all the way down into a valley or flat land. And if it makes its way all the way down into a valley or flat land, and then ends in that front face of the glacier, hits water, salt water or fresh water, that is called a Tidewater Glacier. And those are the ones responsible for icebergs. So you'll see a lot of ice floating around the water, and those fell off or calved off of the glacier itself and fell into the water and became icebergs, which plenty of seals and eagles like to rest on um, when they're not swimming around in the ocean. If you look at pictures of glaciers or have experienced seeing them in person, you'll notice that a lot of times they have this really beautiful blue color. And you may be wondering why that is. It has to do with this fascinating creature called an ice worm. Ice worms are one of the few animals that can actually live inside of the glacial ice 
feeding on algae that lives on the glacial ice and they have these really intense blue eyes and they're also very curious so when tourists come around to look at the glaciers all of the ice worms turn around to look at the tourists and you see their bright blue eyes reflecting through the light yeah no no i'm totally kidding about the ice worms <laughs> so while there are actually worms that do live around glacier ice and even animals such as water bears or tardigrades that live in can live in the glacial ice or near it the color of blue for the glaciers comes from light waves that ice is so dense that any other type any other colored light that tries to hit it just gets absorbed by the ice only higher energy blue and purple light waves can have enough energy to go into the glacier and be still reflected back into our eyes to give us that blue color so it's not as much fun as a ice worm story but it is a lot more scientific talking about optics and the way light goes back to our eyes and we perceive color but you really can't match that blue color for anything and it is one of my favorite things about glaciers is just how blue they get i hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about glaciers today and seeing some footage from my second i know too many trips to alaska trip to alaska and the beautiful glaciers of glacier bay national park i also took um Speaking of that blue color, I took a couple pictures of the one really blue glacier, Marjorie Glacier, with my turquoise film that is supposed to change blues to oranges. And I haven't developed it yet because I'm not home and haven't had the time. But when I do develop those pictures, if they turn out really cool, I will share them with you, which will happen after this video gets posted. So stay tuned for hopefully some cool, hopefully orange, pictures of glaciers that won't be blue. Thank you again so much for watching this. I just wanted to leave you with a little bit of information about how fast glaciers can move because the defining feature of a glacier is that it's moving ice. So glaciers can move anywhere from about 98 feet, which is 30 meters per day, to half a meter or 20 inches per year. There's a very big difference in how fast certain glaciers move. And that has to do with how much ice are they getting from their ice field, how probably steep is that mountain slope, and all sorts of other conditions. But glaciers move just like the sand dunes I talked about earlier this summer. So thanks again for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram, and keep it sciencey.